you know, the marketing and the excitement surrounding this gen AI in a smartphone is not even captured in any of the numbers that we could throw at you right now. But what about um, generative AI, I presume, is going to be only available in premium smartphones. Now, you're making 5G smartphones available at a very attractive price point, in your words. Uh, do you think you will be able to democratize uh, the generative AI, these next-gen AI smartphones, and it will be available at a cheaper rate? And when do you see an inflection in terms of the availability? Absolutely. One of the uh, trends of technology the company believe, we were in the first ones to talk about the concept of hybrid AI and edge AI. And, um, and the combination of the cloud with devices at the edge, with 5G in between. If you remember back when we talk about launching 5G, we talk in the era of 4G, it was about broadband and the personal computing. In the era of 5G, it's 5G plus AI. And the answer is absolutely. As, as we bring uh, 5G capabilities to all devices, we see an incredible opportunity to also bring Gen AI. And that could be as, as early as uh, the end of this year. How many Gen AI smartphones do you think we have right now in the market, and what could that number go up to? Uh, we're just at the beginning of that, but it's interesting, all of the flagship launches that happened in this year uh, of 24, it's all about Gen AI. So it's just the beginning, um, and I think we expect to see all of the phones that, that our partners globally are working to launch in the second half of the year in 25 is all about increasing the number of Gen AI use cases. And as I said, what I'm excited about the AI hub is you, you often think about what the handset maker is doing with AI. But like the app economy, we don't know what developers are going to do. And I think once you have those Gen AI phones, you're going to start to see they're going to get better and better over time as those use cases get developed. Now, traditionally, Qualcomm was always known as a smartphone chip you know, processor, right? Uh, but now you've been diversifying into auto and IoT, and now it's a considerable portion of your overall revenues, and auto has been fast growing. Um, what are the other you know, plans, the next five years, in terms of diversification? How much do you think would be the contribution of smartphones and the contribution of the rest? Look, one of the things that we don't disclose is uh, the percentage, I think, of, uh, of revenue that is coming from the diversi diversification plan. But there are some metrics we provide. For example, I'm going to pick Auto as an example. In automotive, we, we continue to see growth. We talk about now it's uh, $30 billion of contracted pipeline, and we're tracking to have $4 billion of dedicated auto revenues uh, as early as 2026 and get uh, around $9 billion by the end of the decade. The way I will, I will talk about that is uh, to give you some examples. I think auto is growing. Uh, we have a couple of vectors of growth coming in the next few years to answer your question. We're super excited about our entrance into a large scale of the PC as Microsoft is working on next generation AI PCs with the Copilot. I think we're excited about uh, Snapdragon X Elite as one of the fastest uh, processors of any laptop starting the second half this year. That's going to be new revenue for Qualcomm. The other one, we continue to believe in spatial computing. You look at our partnership with Meta and, and uh, other ecosystems such as Google and Samsung, we think that uh, augmented reality, mixed reality uh, glasses are going to be a great companion uh, device that you're going to have, and uh, that could be another future opportunity for Qualcomm. And lastly, I think this whole industrial transformation is getting a significant tailwind from Edge AI. Okay, so now this question is for the benefit of our non-tech, you know, watchers, right? The consumers. Uh, so tell us, what will be the Qualcomm capabilities that we will see in automotive in India? You spoke about how Qualcomm is innovating, particularly for India in the automotive space on the two-wheeler side. So what will be the Qualcomm capabilities we'll see in automotive and even PCs and, you know, AR, XR? Very good. So l let me start with cars. I think, first of all, our goal is to make sure that every car in India is connected to the cloud and, uh, and make sure your car is connected. The second thing is what we're doing, what we call the digital cockpit experience. All of those new screens in the car, how can you get your entertain from the car? How can you get productive in the car? There's a lot of interesting conversation with companies thinking, 
what some of the experiences are for entertainment and productivity when you are behind the wheel. And that, the part that I'm more excited about it from a consumer standpoint, as Gen AI comes to the car, and we're enabling Gen AI in our platforms, uh, working with the Indian manufacturers, you'll be able to have a conversation with your car. And because the natural language is perfect when a consumer is behind the wheel. Now, if you think about PCs, um, what we have built is the best of both worlds. It's the best of mobile with the best of next generation PC in X Elite. And it's about having not only a, the fastest laptop, uh, but make sure you're not compromising on the form factor, all day battery life, and be able to run all of those AI uh, use cases that we talk about it uh, for consumers and for the enterprises on the device. And I think uh, the last one I think that you asked the question is, augmented reality, mixed reality. Uh, we see that this category, uh, just using an example of the success we're having with Meta, not only on the Meta Quest devices, but now they have those smart glasses uh, is in the partnership with Ray-Ban. Ray -Ban. And we are exceeding all expectations. Gen AI, it's perfect for glasses as well. Like in the car, it's an easier for you to have a conversation or query or even with images that you see in real time. So that's going to change how consumers are going to experience technology right in front of their eyes. That's an exciting development as well. Let's talk about the Make in India opportunity and how Qualcomm is capitalizing on it. Look, um, one of the conversations we have is the opportunity to look at the scale of India to look of the fact that the entire um, you know, globe is looking for diversified, resilient supply chains and actually creates an, a very significant electronics and semiconductor industry. And I think we, we see a huge opportunity to capitalize as Indian companies, uh, from startup companies to large conglomerates, looking into enter the space, where there's industrial modules, eventually an Indian smartphone maker, local PC maker, uh, and of course we see a higher level maturity on the automotive industry. That's very exciting, I think, for Qualcomm and for India as well. And particularly on semiconductor, what is Qualcomm's play going to be in India? This is the simple answer I can give it to you. Qualcomm's the largest <laughs> fabulous company in the world. Like many governments, we have same interest. We want to see a geographically diversified and resilient supply chain. So if India builds a semiconductor manufacturing uh, capability or a hub or even for assembly, Qualcomm's going to be there as a customer. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest contributions we can provide. Are you in talks with anyone? We're in talks with many companies and I think we're and where encouraging. where are the progress? Uh, good progress. I think we, we're, we're encouraged by the interest uh, of the Indian government and some of the companies to invest in semiconductors. And we are in dialogue to, uh, to identify what technologies are, are very interesting for Qualcomm and how we can help. Three years at, uh, as a top job at Qualcomm, what's been your biggest high and um, biggest learning and the mistakes perhaps you've made? Look, um, it's always a difficult question to answer, but I'll say we're incredibly proud of the progress we made in automotive. I think it's we have been on a mission to uh, diversify the company because we realize that the technologies that we have developed for mobile are relevant to so many different industry and UN markets. And it's not and because mobile is stagnating. We, we want to continue to be the company that is always recognized by uh, the leader in mobile innovation. But connectivity, computing, and artificial intelligence uh, can be uh, beneficial to so many different industries. And automotive, in a short period of time, I think we became a very significant provider of technology for the future of the automotive industry. I think that's something we're very proud. Um, the next uh, big focus of the company is to do the same thing on industrial. Um, in this, and uh, and in the Gen AI opportunity, especially at the edge. And, you know, I think if you, if you ask me what are the things that uh, you learn as, as you grow and well, diversify, it's sometimes it's not easy for the companies to develop new core competences, to 
reinvent themselves. Uh, but if you look at our history, from where we started and where we are, I think, you know, I like to say Qualcomm, you know, Qualcomm means quality communications. We started as a radio communication company, and now we look at ourselves for more of a computing company than a radio communication companies. And in the future, we want to become uh, known as an artificial intelligence company for the edge. So we just need to continue in this mission, no matter how hard it is. Christiana, this has been a great conversation. Thank you very much for speaking with CNBC TV 18. My pleasure. Thank you.